Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and this is the handover of a Swift Escape 622. So as we walk round the driver's side of the vehicle first, using the habitation key, which is this one here, you can open all your external lockers. And the first one is your cassette toilet. So once you've turned the key, you'll be able to press both buttons in, release the door. Behind here we have a cassette, so this is your cassette loose, this is where everything goes. So when it's time to empty it, all you need to do is lift the orange handle, slide the cassette out of the motorhome, you can either carry it or you can drag it to your waste disposal point, which is normally beside your toilet block on site. And then to empty, you take the cap off, Press the orange button at the back of the cassette and pour the content of the cassette out. Once you've tipped it out by pressing the button, there's normally a tap there so you put some water in here. You give it a rinse, you tip out again and then you go in with a cap full of the liquid which is 4 ounces or 70, 175 millilitres of either blue or green chemical. Once you've put the chemical in you can then put the cassette back into the motorhome. Just slide it in and it clips back into place. Next locker we've got is your LPG locker. So this is your liquid petroleum gas locker. So this is where your gas bottles live. And in here we have got one of our test bottles on. So make sure you've got two six kilogram propane bottles because that's what you'll need. As you can fit a spare behind and one here. And then what you need to do is before you put the pigtail on, which is this pipe here, which connects it to the regulator at the back, you need to put the you need the strap on. So this goes around the neck of the bottle, then you strap the bottle in just to keep it secure when you're traveling. And to connect your pigtail, it's a left hand thread and hand tighten. No need for a spanner on this type of pigtail. And then you turn the bottle on and off from the top of the bottle. Always making sure that you turn it off before you travel. And then once one bottle is empty, you can just turn, change the pigtail to the other bottle behind. Here you have your battery locker. So again, same key. You've got your hookup point. So to hook the motor home up, you get your hookup lead, lift the collar and expose the ends. Hook the motor home up first. Pop the lead in between the locker here so that you can shut it and the lead's still secure. Hook the motor home up first, then the sight and do it in reverse order when unhooking. And you've got an external TV point here, so if you were on a super sight, you can use a length of coax to connect to their aerial instead of using the aerial on the top of the motor home. I've also got your new max leisure battery so this is a 105 amp hour battery this gives the location of your boiler on your vehicle so it's in the back corner of your lounge this cover needs to come off when heating the water on gas because it won't allow the fumes out the flue and it'll clog the exhaust and it won't heat the water because it's a fail safe system so to take the cover off hand on the top thumb in the middle peel it off pop this in the gas locker or the driver's door pocket and then before you travel just pop that back on so that you don't get behind here all dirty from road dirt and remember to pop it on before you wash the vehicle so that you don't get a build up of water in here but for now we'll leave that off on the back of the vehicle you've got your high level brake light you've got your crash bar there so headley's tow bar rear protection bumper bar tow bar with seven pin electrics so if you plan to tow you do have a tow bar on the back and then you can use this key here which opens your ultra store fiamma box and you can store some bits and pieces in there As we walk around, you've got your fresh water filling point. So to fill the vehicle with fresh water, 
you'll need to go and buy yourself a hose pipe with some hose pipe connections as it's mainly just a brass tap on site use the same key and when it turns it's locked turn the key push it in and turn you can pop your flat end of your hose into here and fill it until it either overflows or until you're happy there's enough water on board which you can see on the control panel and then lock the cap so it's locked so that nobody can tamper with your water underneath this is your waste water drain off valve so should you've taken on should your waste be full when you leave your site you'd go over a grid open the drain and you want to drain off all your waste water so that you're not carrying around excess of water because there's no need to because you're just going to add more weight to the vehicle at the top of the vehicle you've got your f45 fiemma awning which we can show you on collection and underneath there you do have a c rail which has been put on so if you're planning on putting a air awning on to give you extra space when you're on that site You've got a reel there where you can connect your tent to the side of the motorhome to give you that extra bit of living space. Two fridge vents, all in lights. And then you do have a Fiamma security lock. So you need to make sure that the door's shut. Use the funny shaped key. Turn this over here. Open the lock, push it in and then close the lock. You would put that on when you're storing the vehicle either on the driveway or, a to or in a storage yard. You would never put this on when you're travelling in the motorhome because if you can't get out the cab doors, you need to get out the habitation door. So always make sure that this is not locked when you are travelling on the road. This step here is a manual step so it doesn't retract with the engine. There's no button to put it out, you've just got to fold it in and fold it out your diesel for filling with fuel is here opens with the main ignition key on the passenger side of the cab door the tyre pressures are here so 5 bar on the front which is 72.3 psi and 5.5 on the back which is 79.5 psi Underneath the passenger seat is where you've got your jack and a brace and a torn eye in there. Underneath the cab floor, underneath the section which goes right the way along to here, is where your engine battery lives. So should you be wanting to put a charger on in the winter, or if you ever need to replenish the battery, it is through the floor. And your bonnet release is on the side of the dash. So all your fluids are this side, so the main one you're going to need is your screen wash. Then you do have your power steering fluid, coolant and brake fluid, oil filler, dipstick just down here for checking the oil, paint cord so should you ever need any touch up for the blue imperial colour, it's four. 55 slash a which is your paint code and then to jump start the vehicle you've got an earthen point here and a positive there so to operate your switch panel in the middle you've got your master button which either turns on 12 volt if you're not hooked up or if you are hooked up it will turn on mains 230 volt as well so turn the vehicle on So once you've turned it on, you'll be able to press your lights, which is this one here. Your awning light, which is the light on the outside of the motorhome. You can turn that on, that on and off from here. You can view the levels of your batteries. So as you can see there, you can view the level of your leisure battery. And you can see that it's charging on mains power because the little blue light's on. And then this side, you've got your pump. So should you have enough water in, 
make sure that you do have water in don't put the pump on without any water in because you will cause damage to the pump you'll be able to turn on and as you can see there you've got nearly a full tank of fresh water and view your levels here of your fresh which is shown you and view your levels of your waste just saying that you've got half a tank of waste water on board at present to lock the habitation door of the motorhome on an evening all you need to do from the inside is lift it up into the red and it's locked bring it down into the green and you'll be able to open the door and you do have a full size fly screen on there as well to keep the unwanted guests out of the vehicle so in the kitchen to operate your three burner hob make sure your gas is turned on outside make sure that your 12 volt control panels on to get the ignition and then you'll be able to light all three gas rings and then once you've turned them off allow them so that they're cool enough to touch until you put the glass lid down because feeling that and if you do put the glass lid down when it's too hot this may shatter and when it shatters it goes into a million pieces so do just be careful and it'll make an almighty bang and then underneath you've got a grill and then under the grill you do have an oven you may want to take your grill pan and oven shelf out when travelling as it can cause a little bit of vibration when on the road Pressing the catch in underneath the oven you've got a storage shelf and a little bit of storage here the wheel arch is at the back and then you do have two gas taps so it tells you the open and close position just leave them in the open position the only time you're going to need them closed is if you think you've got a gas leak from an individual appliance but you still want to use gas these are mainly for when the vehicle is annually serviced but your green one is your hob and oven and the blue one is your fridge slide out cutlery drawer and then you've got a storage shelf there worktop extension with the chopping board there and then pressing the catch in the centre of the cupboard you've got the access to the back of your owner light just here obviously make sure you turn it on from your panel but you do have a switch on it as well here to turn it on and off so two shelves there cup rack plate rack you can take these out if you want to put your own thing in for storing your crockery in your cupboards to operate your fetford fridge so it's a three-way fridge so the three-way selector is on the left hand dial so as you can see there you've got off so if the vehicle wasn't in use you wouldn't have your fridge on because you wouldn't need to if you were going while camping you turn it up to gas which is the next one you press and hold the button in until the orange band here in the white goes into the green and then you would let go and the fridge is lit on gas if you go into a site or you want to pre-chill it at home you put it on the mains electric when the vehicle is hooked up and the fridge will act like a household fridge on 230 volt so if you're pre-chilling it a few days before you'll want to hook the van up because you don't necessarily want to put your fridge on but you want to charge your leisure battery but then you would put your fridge on anyway just to pre-chill it down to temperature and this is your temperature selection here so have it on full blast to cool it down and then when you put your shopping in the night before you go away you would turn the temperature down slightly so that the shopping doesn't freeze when you are traveling though once you've pre-chilled the fridge you can pop it on the battery which is this one here and what that does is when the engine is started it sends a feed from the ignition to the fridge and it'll act like a 12 volt cool box until you get back on site and either hook up or you change over to gas and light it on gas 
However, once you are finished with the fridge, it's very important that you don't shut the door because it's got an airtight seal on here. So it'll trap all the air in and your motorhome will start to smell. So just wedge the door open so that the door doesn't shut and the air doesn't get trapped and cause any smells. And it's also good practice just to give it a clean out with some antibacterial wipes or sprays to clean the fridge out once in a while but especially when winter rising because you're putting it away for the winter so clean your fridge out leave the door open because the van could be sat for a few months not used so to operate your traumatic truma fire on gas what you do is use the gas level indicator here push it down and turn it to the temperature that you want so what and press the igniter and then you'll hear it roar and if you look at it a certain way you can see there you can see the frame in the bottom left hand corner this is lit and you would use the gas side if you weren't hooked up so if you're wild camping or you took it out in the winter and um, for the day and you were sat down by the coast having some fish and chips and you didn't want to sit in a cold van as long as you've got a gas bottle on you can turn you heat her on and heat the motor home. This side you've got a 12 volt fan. So when this is off, it's convecting the heat out the front, which is probably what you're gonna want if you're wild camping. Just obviously watch loose clothing round by the fire that you don't hurt yourself and burn yourself. So you'd have it coming out the front because you don't want to waste your leisure battery by using a 12 volt fan. You want to prolong the life of the ledger battery as much as possible when wild camping by using lights, your cooker, other bits and pieces and not wasting it on a fan because it's going to circulate anyway. But you do have a 1 to 5 on the fan which is a fan that blows it around the top and bottom of the vehicle and into the washroom when you either put it on the A which is automatic and once the thermos st start in the vehicle detects the temperature it will cut out or you can have it on manual which is the other way and you will then have to intervene and turn either the temperature of it down or the fan speed and you can use this fan not only on gas but on electric and the electric controls are just beside it so to heat the van on electric it's this dial here which is the right sided dial so you've got it off You've got 2,000 watts, 2,000 kilowatt even, which is 1,500 watts, and 1 to 9, which is just your temperature. So 9 is equivalent to 30 degrees, so 5 is probably 15, so you just need to adjust that to the temperature that you want the inside of the vehicle to be, or you've got... 500 watts which is half a kilowatt or a thousand kilowatts a thousand watts even which is one kilowatt so it depends what the site gives you in amperage whether you use a thousand or two thousand watts more sites throughout the UK will give you between 12 and 16 amp most will give you 16 if you are on 12 amp and you are tripping the vehicle all the time you may be just overloading it so just use one thing at a time or turn the heating slightly down to 1000 or 500 just to stop it from tripping this dial here is how you heat your water so on the left hand dial is the temperature of your water making sure that the covers off and it's on gas you just turn it down the gas flame and it'll start to heat the 10 litres of water that you can heat on any time and obviously the LPG heater must not be in operation when the vehicle is in motion directly behind your switches for your ultra store and ultra heat on gas and electric you've got your trips for the vehicle so this is the trips on mains 230 volt you've got your space heater switch on which then uses this dial here so make sure that's switched on to then control the heating 
of the vehicle on electric from there. You've got the water heater switch on electric, so you can heat your water on electric on this model. And all you need to do is turn this on and off. There's no temperature, it'll just heat the water up to temperature, the 10 litres. But make sure if you don't have any water in the vehicle and the boiler is drained down, you turn it off before you hook the vehicle up, because you can burn the element out. It is just like heating a kettle without any water in. And then you've got your battery charger, which you'll want to turn on, and this will charge your leisure battery when you hooked up. At the back here you've got the main battery fuse for your batteries and you've got all the fuses here for your various items so do carry some spare fives seven and a half tens and 20 amp fuses standard blade fuses just in case anything does blow a fuse you can replenish whatever's blown the fuse there In the back corner of the lounge, on the other side, you do have your vent for your hot water system on gas. So this on this side does show you where the boiler is located on the vehicle. The boiler holds 10 litres of water, as you can see there, it is 10 litres. When the weather starts getting colder from around October, back end of October to March, maybe middle of April, depending on how bad the winter is we have you'll want to drain the vehicle down and to drain it down all you need to do is lift this up which is your drain down toggle so stand it up on end it will allow the 10 litres of water directly out underneath the chassis you would come in with no power on so that the pump which is at the back doesn't kick in because it's trying to put the water back into the boiler Come in, lift that up and leave it stood up on end during the time you're not using the vehicle. Open all the taps within the motorhome. Open the fresh and waste so that that drains down. And then that means that no water is going to sit in any pipelines, in any tanks, and then in the boiler and potentially freeze. When you then come to reuse the motorhome in this, the, the upcoming season, what you'll have to do is shut everything again. So shut the boiler, shut the fresh and shut the waste and shut all your taps. Then you can get the hose pipe and stick it in the side of the motorhome and fill it with water. Once it is full, you can then come in and put the control panel on and put the pump on and open the cold side of the tap first You'll get a pressurised cold water feed because it's bringing it from the tank below via the pump to the tap. When you start going to the hot, it starts filling this boiler here. So it may take a few minutes, it'll cough, splutter, make all sorts of noises until you get a free flow of water from the hot side. This is when you know that your system is then primed. So to make the back lounge into a bed, underneath your drawers with your table, which just slides out, like so, that would drop into the back if you wanted to use it as a table. You've got a turnbuckle, turn that out the way, slide the lats out but slide them out slowly so that they don't fall through because they, they will if you're a bit too ampadious with it. Slide them out until they hit these two stoppers and then what you've got to do is lift this slowly as you slide as you continue to slide the board to the other side of the stoppers, wedge that in there. That's your, that's the the middle braced out for your bed, and then pop your infill cushions into the back. Using the infill cushions as well. in the centre of the so we'll squeeze these in into there and there you have formed a double bed out of your back lounge. In the wardrobe you've got your hanging reel and you've also got your TV aerial and booster. So the green light shown that the TV aerial has found a good enough signal. Should it be orange what I would do first is Adjust the booster to suit until you get the green light 
but if you're still not struggling, if you're getting a red light and it's still not showing green, you then have to adjust the aerial. And to do so, you'd loosen the nut off, push the stem of the aerial out and use the toggle on the bottom to direct the aerial. Once this goes green, you've got a good enough, strong enough signal. But if your picture on your TV is still pixelated, try turning the booster down first. And there is a switch on this just up here, but leave it turned on and it'll go off with the control panel as is a 12 volt TV booster. In your washroom, you've got your shower curtain, you've got your shower head. Remember, when you do winterize, unscrew your shower head from the hose and lie the hose in your shower tray just to stop any water from coiling up in here and potentially freezing with the taps open. Underneath, you've got storage on both sides. Frosted window with a fly screen if you want it open or a blackout blind. Toilet cabinet at the top with a hanging rail for a towel and a toilet roll holder. And then to operate your toilet, make sure that it pumps on, which it is. You'll be able to press the blue button, which is from your fresh water tank for the flush. So flush the toilet first and always put a small amount of water in the toilet before use. This helps the seal between the toilet and the cassette stay lubricated and not become hard. And then you want to open the blade which is where this grey lever comes into play. So slide this to the right. You can now use the toilet. After you've used the toilet give it a good flush. If you've bought the blue and the pink liquids together in the twin pack, get an empty spray bottle, dilute a little bit of pink with some water, spray the bowl, it'll give a fragrant smell and it'll clean the toilet bowl as well. And then once you've flushed it, close this back to the left. If that was to stay open, the cassette won't come out the outside of the van because the mechanism's engaged. Once it is closed, you'll be able to slide it out. But get in the practice of doing it in that order and then the cassette will indicate on here underneath the diagram when it is full and it's time to empty it and replenish it with chemical. Above the cab, if you put your ladder on the front, you do have your double bed across the width of the cab with a window there with blackout blind and fly screen on which also opens for ventilation. You can slide the curtains along for privacy and then when you're not using the space, ladder goes back up there. You can store lighter items up there when you travel like extra bed and clothing and you can push it up and you've got more headroom to get in and out of the cab, which should you need to go through the cab, I can run through the cab with you tomorrow in person. But behind the driver's seat is where your table lives. And then you do have your way plates just on here. So go off this one as it's been a stage two conversion by Swift Group. So you've got your three and a half, three point three ton gross vehicle weight with a tow bar. You can tow two ton, and you've got your front and back axle weights. And then you've also got your Swift build number down the side. Should you need any parts from Swift, quote us that number, and we'll be able to get the right part for your motorhome.